Hey everyone, Josh Hayes here for scoresheet.com and today I want to talk about the difference between setting lineups for GPPs and for 50-50 games here. So let's go ahead and start on the 50-50 side. Obviously uh, you're trying to place a lineup that does better than uh, half of the field and you basically double your money. Some of those uh, are triple ups and I've seen quadruple ups out there. Uh, those are a little bit, I think you sort of lean a little bit towards the uh, uh, GPP strategy and some of those. So we'll set those aside and just let's talk about 50-50s uh, strictly to begin with. So uh, for an example on scoresheet.com, what I like to do is to take my core six or seven guys that I know that I'm super solid with uh, that are absolutely the best plays and I'll place those uh, players in my lineup first. A uh, great example obviously is Russell Westbrook who is a lock uh, for the top spot in scoring on score streak and DeAndre Jordan who um, if you're not using him uh, as a top rebounder on score streak, then I think you're probably doing it wrong. He's an absolute monster, averaging I think 19 and a half rebounds per game right now. So I'll lock players like those into my lineups, and then I'll have sort of a decision to make uh, with some of the questionable players for either you know six assists, 20 points, uh, 10 rebounds, and then I'll do the the research that I like to do on the defensive stats and the you know, you know training performance, and then I'll decide who I believe are the optimal plays, and I'll place those players all across my 50-50 lineups and um, that's how I basically go about it. Now the way that you can sort of tweak that here is uh, in the GPP format. Uh, let's say for instance on uh, the Friday free roll and the Sunday depositor free roll on score streak, those players, um, you, those fields you tend to have about three to four hundred players so there will be a lot bigger field. So what I'll do is I'll take the last one or two players out of my optimal 50-50 lineup and let's say I was deciding between Kyle Lowry, uh, for instance, and Jeff Teague for the last uh, assist spot. I'm just using that as an example for today. And um, what I would do if I used Kyle Lowry in my 50-50 spot, if I determined that was the optimal play, I may pull him out and insert Jeff Teague and do the same thing for 10 rebounds. Instead of using uh, Nikola Vucevic, I'll go with uh, Joakim Noah because I feel like he is going to be the lower owned player. Or I may even go a little bit farther down the list uh, like a Derek Favors or a Kenneth Reed who had back-to-back double-doubles um, coming into the Saturday night, Saturday night game because I know if he hits 10 rebounds and the other guys miss their 10 rebounder guy, then I'm the only person who has Kenneth Reed and that can place me uh, in the top spot. Now for score streak purposes, I tend to use my optimal 50-50 lineup across the board in their GPPs because the GPPs are, gen are generally smaller and uh, they're single entry tournaments so there isn't um, you don't have to worry too much about creating uh, differentiation or using different sort of lineups in order to uh, you know increase your chances to win because you only have one entry now as far as FanDuel and DraftKings go with their GPPs it's a lot harder to have a core of seven or eight players uh, total you know usually that number is going to be something like four to six uh, core players that you're going to build your team around and then you'll have three to four options as far as how you're going to differentiate your team here now if you're only going to use a single entry I would probably recommend you tweaking your GPP lineup a little bit less uh, than if you would if you're going to fire up five six ten uh, entries or more in a multi-entry GPP so the, the the what I'm saying is the more entries you're going to use the more you probably should have some flexibility in changing three or four players out of your GPP lineup rather than one or two so prime example for today on FanDuel and DraftKings would be somebody like Jordan Clarkson who is, I think, priced in the mid-5,000, I think 5,600 or 5,800 in the mid-5,000s. And you have an option between subbing him out for Jeremy Lin or subbing him out for somebody like Aaron Brooks. We're all four or five hundred, six hundred dollars within each other. You could take somebody like, if you had Jordan Clarkson in your lineup, unplug him, place somebody like Aaron Brooks uh, into your lineup and try to create that differentiation. Now, how you go about... Uh, which players you should absolutely use as what you need to do in these situations is look for players who are going to have potentially a lower floor but a much higher ceiling so like the range of outcomes that could potentially happen with Aaron Brooks I believe is something like 15 fantasy points which would be very bad and be damaging to your chances to finish uh, well into the money in GPP but he could finish in the 40 plus range 45 plus range would be uh, point and a half uh, per uh, minute uh, one and a half fantasy points uh, per minute. So what you're sort of shooting for on average when players enter your lineup is one 
uh, fantasy point per minute, and these these players generally play 30 minutes, so 30 points would be the average. If you could find somebody like an Aaron Brooks, for example, like a Jeremy Lin, who could end up scoring 45 points or more, a point and a half per fantasy minute, because they have a good matchup. And speaking of good matchups, the reason why I reference the LA Laker point guards is because the uh, Dallas Mavericks backcourt, I believe, is 25th or 26th in fantasy points allowed. Uh, to opposing backcourts. So that's the sort of thing that you need to target when you're looking to differentiate your lineups for GPPs is good defensive matchups on cheap players that have uh, a wide range of outcomes. They could be a, a little bit of a dud in your fantasy lineup, but they could hit, and if they hit, they hit big, and you're, they're probably a, a low-owned percentage player, which could help you finish in the money in your GPP lineups. Now, the the way that I look at this, too, is... Um, if you're if you're not going to fire up a bunch of GPP line, if you're only going to play one, I would probably recommend being taking the safer player and just take your optimal 50-50 lineup and then fire that up into the GPP. And so uh, you know you're you're probably more likely to cash, but less likely to finish in the top spot as in terms of the money. Um, the sort of GPP differentiation strategy really only applies to people who are who have bigger bankrolls who are trying to fire up. Uh, five, ten entries or more, and trying to place as many lineups into uh, the money as possible, which is why we would recommend you not changing your entire lineup uh, you know, for the GPPs, which is why you should have a, a core of five, six, seven players for you to roll into your fantasy lineups and then take those three or four that you think could be potential outliers and try to find the home run plays that will help you get the top spot in those big tournaments and take and take home the cash. Very, not easy. Obviously, uh, you know you're, you have to expect a good number of variants when you're changing these lineups. You're going to have some duds, and along with some of the studs that you end up hitting. Um, but that's the general strategy in terms of GPPs and 50-50s. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Fantasy Hoops Pod. Don't forget to check out Score Streaker on Twitter at Score Streaker. A lot of GPPs and 50-50 tournaments, a lot of cash games going on uh, each and every day. So make sure you give them a follow and check them out. Good luck in all your fantasy matchups, everybody.